What's going on, everybody? It's Jeremy here. Time to talk about this week's indie comics that I'm looking forward to picking up and reading. I've got a good top 10 for you guys, and then I've got actually uh, two trade paperbacks as well. So let's get into this. Uh, we're going to start with the trade paperbacks and then get into the top 10. First trade paperback I want to talk about is the Resistance Universe, the Origins trade paperback. This one from a whole slew of creators because it's pulling lots of different stories from the Resistance universe into this collected edition. We've got uh, the story of the main story is in here. The story, uh, the Resistance universe, uh, the first volume of that, I believe, um, followed by uh, the first issue of the follow up series, first issue of Erratic, Knighted, the Joneses all into this supersized collection. Uh, in March of 2020, amid the COVID-19 lockdowns, AWA launched a bold new universe for the 21st century with J. Michael Straczynski and Mike Diodato Jr.'s uh, The Resistance, in which Reborns gain incredible powers in the wake of a global pandemic. Other creators then spun out of that with their creations in this world. Uh, like Kari Andres's, uh Erratic, which has been such a good read. But I finally recently went back and read The Resistance Universe, uh, the first two volumes of that, and absolutely loved the story and the connection to things that had been going on uh, during the COVID-19 lockdowns uh, and, and some of the themes really just lining up so brilliantly with... Uh, the real world and, and in such a way though that you're not feeling like the real world's just being thrown at you in comic form uh, and so I really really loved that and now if you want to get that collect edition and check out all the the different parts of the world get a little taste of it you can get this for only $20 you get the like I said the I believe it's the first volume and then single issues of every spin-off after that so there's a lot of content in there it's a it's going to be a big uh, trade for AWA, bigger than normal, and I think that's going to be worth worth the price there. Uh, moving over to another one. This one's from Sumerian Comics. This is Dark Beach, Volume 1, for Michael Ruiz Unger and G Gonzalo Ruggieri uh, and Sebastian Paris. Sebastian's artwork is, like I always say, one of my favorites out there right now on interior arts. And... Um, Michael brings in such a great story, such a cool sci-fi world uh, that I just, I want I want there to be a volume two of this, so I'm really hoping there is. Um, but if you missed reading these individually, here's what it's about. Earth has been drifting away from the sun for 300 years, but that doesn't stop Gordo, a crime scene photographer living inside the dome-protected city of New Reykjavik from dreaming about its warm glow. Is the sun as dangerous as the NRCE, New Reykjavik Corps of Engineers? Let everyone to believe, or will a murder rife with old sun mystery throw Gordo down a rabbit hole to find the truth? Part sci-fi story with a really cool world, part mystery, uh, whodunit murder kind of thing going on, uh, but there's just so much world building that happens in this that I, I fell in love with this world. Uh, and I hope somebody else can can enjoy it now as well. So let's go into the top 10. This uh, first one in my top 10 is going to be a probably a surprise. It's not usually my, my typical thing, but there's a reason. This is on my list, and this is the Machine Girl Holiday Special. Uh, and the reason it's on my list is Damien Connolly has written a story that is in this. It is a special one-shot, 48 pages of story content, and a cardboard cover. Three short stories from three creative teams explore the world of Machine Girl in an all-new format. Machine Girl takes human holidays to space. From an early age, Megan has been obsessed with an old planet called Earth. From the horrific Halloween to the cheerful Christmas, its holidays, its holidays will make their way into her days at the at the farm and even into her life on an intergalactic pirate ship. Uh, this one coming from Red Five Comics, along with Stonebot comics uh bringing this one and like i said not my typical but uh sounds pretty cool uh to see damien getting to uh guest right in a in a property like this and uh of course you know his work from you promised me darkness follow me into the darkness and 
Nobody's uh, Girls, which is coming up on the list here in a little bit. Number nine on the list this week is coming from Boom Studios, and it is A Vicious Circle, issue number one of three from Matson Tomlin and Lee Bermejo. Iconic artist Lee Bermejo from Batman the Damned and Joker partners with director and screenwriter Matson Tomlin from Batman the Imposter. Sean Thacker is trained assassin from the future who seeks revenge on the only other man with his affliction. Each life they take forces them both to travel between vastly different past and future eras, spanning from 20, 20, 22nd century Tokyo to 1950s New Orleans to the Cretaceous era and beyond. The two mortal rivals locked in a battle of wills that spans millions of years to all to alter the course of history. With each time period, Lee Bermejo adjusts his artistic style to pay homage to luminary comics, artists, and historical master painters, all presented in a prestige, oversized format. Which all sounds really, really cool. Uh, his artwork is top-notch artwork, like high, high quality. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to pick this up single issues, but I do want to read this story, so I will probably wait for the trade on this. Uh, mainly the the cost is ten dollars an issue, so that would be uh, thirty dollars to pick up single issues. So hopefully the trade is cheaper to pick up than that. Um, that it does have a high price tag, so I'm hoping it's worth the cost for for those uh, picking it up. But uh, for me right now, I think it's a trade weight. But it sounds really cool. I love the idea. I love the artwork. Um, and that's why it's further down on my list because I'm not picking it up. But I think it's well worth uh, the pickup if you're willing to uh, drop $10 on it. Popstar Assassin Volume 2 is coming to an end here with issue number 4 from Ed Laval and Marcelo Basile coming from Sumerian Comics. And this is my number seven, uh, number 8 pick this week. The White Knuckle Ride Through American Conspiracy. Spiranoia concludes with a bunch of rattlesnakes and bald motherfuckers. Robert finds a curious key amidst all of the destruction. A new boss rises. Roxy Cox takes a long bus ride to nowhere, and Bruce takes a chill pill, literally. Number seven this week, going to one from Image Comics from Mark Millar and Juanan Ramirez. We've got Nightclub number one of six. This series will be $1.99. Take that, Marvel and DC. I love I love that. I love one that's $1.99 and two that they're just like, take that, we're doing what we want with the price. You're a 17 year old and you've been bitten by a vampire. Do you live in the shadows and drink human blood or do you use your newfound gifts for the dream cost costumed hero life you've always wanted? You're bulletproof, you can crawl up walls and you can turn to mist, bats, or even a wolf. Why not have a little fun? Sounds like a super cool idea. I actually didn't add this to my pool list because I was kind of looking to see what was coming out that week. And I think I'm not picking up as much this week. So I will probably pick this up because it's only $1.99. And that is a smart move on their part to put it at that price and see if that pulls in more readers. But it looks like teenage luchador vampires fighting crime. I don't know how you can say no to that. Uh, sounds really cool. Another great idea coming from Mark Millar's mind. That is uh, the number, what did I say? Number seven pick this week. Number six going over to Boom Studios for Specs issue number two from David M. Boer and Chris Sheehan. In this Stranger Things meets Stand by Me story from House of Slaughter artist Chris Sheehan and writer David M. Boer, the magic specs were far more than Kenny and Ted signed up for. Given their unwillingness to acknowledge the dangerous consequences of their recent wish, what does this mean for their victim and what do they do with the glasses moving forward? Kenny fears that all of this may affect his and Ted's relationship and wonders if they'll truly remain just friends. We already talked about uh, issue three was just on FOC uh, this week. And uh, I was like, well, hopefully issue two is coming out uh, this coming week. And it is, so it doesn't quite line up the way they probably were hoping, but um, issue two, issue one was fantastic. Uh, David knows how to write a great story, and uh, Christian's art is fantastic. So let's let's head into these top five picks, 
And uh, this one I'm really excited about. It's back. We've got Grim issue number six from Boom Studios from Stephanie Phillips. Philip, Stephanie Phillips and Flaviano. Following the wild success and high demand reprints of the initial issues of Grimm. Okay, boom. Settle down. Uh, the series continues on in its next exciting chapter. For fans new to the series, Grimm number six releases in tandem with the Grimm Volume 1 Softcover Discover Now edition. A perfect starting point to binge the secrets of the afterlife. Still trapped in Las Vegas, Jessica, Eddie, and Marcel encounter a fabulous twist on mythical Greek figures, as well as someone with the authority to get them out of their phantasmal dilemma. I just, I love Flaviano's artwork. When Rico Renzi's colors on this, I don't know if those get enough discussion. It's fantastic. The lettering on this is incredible. Who have we got lettering this? Uh, Tom Napolitano, Napolitano, uh, just killing the lettering. Uh, just, you can see it even on the first like couple pages that they have as previews the lettering is is fantastic and fits the theme so well the sound effects are incredible uh everything about it just yes i love this world that the, that's being built up i love that it's continuing and i think uh if you haven't picked up volume one go pick it up now it's a great opportunity to pick up and catch up on the story uh, going down to number four on the list, we've got from Mad Cave Studios, Nature's Labyrinth number two from Zach Thompson uh, and Bailey Underwood. First issue, another awesome first issue for uh, recent stories that have been coming out. Uh, after being dropped on a terrifying island with an ever-changing landscape and left to fight for their lives, it's all-out mayhem as the rules of the game have evolved to include specialized weapons for each of the felons. The island will show the contestants who they truly are. Will they accept the truth or will they devolve into the violent criminals they are? Two of six here uh, for this series. And first issue was wild off the start. We essentially have like, uh, it, it's, it feels like a mix of, of uh, Battle Royale, Hunger Games. Um, and what's the other one? The... Uh, I'm, I'm blanking on it, but I, I, I'm picturing is like they had this maze thing they had to escape from. It was an, a young adult series. But anyways, all of those, I'm like feeling vibes from all of them in this. But it's at the same time so unique, so different in its own right. And uh, my number four pick. Number three this week going to Nobody's Girls. Number two of three from Damian Connolly and Matias San Juan. The search for Lupe continues. Emmett and Nora. Norma start sticking their noses where they shouldn't, and the weather starts to get really murky. A journey to the darkest places of a rotten city. Another issue one that was fantastic. And, uh, of course, like I said, Damien Connolly has a short story coming out in that uh, Machine Girl holiday special and uh, is writing uh, all the time, something I'm a fan of, and... Uh, want to check out what you know what the next story is coming from him uh so this one no exception here issue number two of three coming from sumerian comics number two this week it is the last issue of wind thrown in the sky we got five of five here from james tynan and michael d alinas the final battle is here as the fairy army closes in. The kids seemingly have nowhere to escape with wind and dire straits as he takes it upon himself to battle the fairy general. What will it take to save the children? And more importantly, what role does wind's blood play in all of this? About to get some answers and probably get left on another cliffhanger until volume four. And if you missed it, we had Michael on the channel talking about his art and wind and where we're going next with wind. And it might be a little while before the next volume comes out, um, but uh, it's going to be worth the wait. It's uh, I, I can't wait. I, I it, This one isn't even over yet, and I'm already like, all right, I want to see volume four. Um, but it doesn't mean we're going to be left hanging without any awesome work from from michael and he will be working on something for for the next year um that's all i can say but this 
I, I'm, I'm so excited for this confrontation, for uh, what what's going to kind of wrap up this arc in a, in a nice way that uh, doesn't leave too many unanswered questions, but leaves us just waiting and wanting that, that, that fourth volume. Um, but it gives time for more people to get on wind. First two volumes are out there. If you have not checked it out yet, it is a fantastic fantasy story uh, with elements of, of uh, LGBTQ um, in there and uh, young adult kind of coming of age type story in there as well. It is covering so many aspects of awesome storytelling and beautiful artwork uh, depicting this fantasy world that Wind is in. Uh, so please go check this out. It's just phenomenal. And speaking of guests that we've had on the channel, we've got my number one pick, Dream Master number one, Jonathan Hedrick writing with Luigi Baricelli on the artwork, uh, and I, I think Ruben Curto on colors with DC Hopkins on letters. This one coming from Black Box Comics, and it is a five issue miniseries about a forgotten paladin protecting us from our nightmares while we sleep. Without him, we may never wake up again. He is the Dream Master. His curse is to guard our unconscious bodies from an evil entity who wishes to enter our reality, collapsing it for all eternity. There are so many things in this story that remind me of, of dreams, of nightmares, of some of those tropes of like, falling off a, a cliff and waking up and like the you know those sensations that you get when you wake up sometimes that it really just pulls you into this world luigi's artwork is incredible is so detailed the background is you're always going to find something new to look at in the background as well as our characters the design of dream master is so cool uh i love his mask the galaxy kind of thing going on in it it's just brilliant. Is my number one pick. Uh, we got a new world to dive into here with Black Box Comics. And if you haven't already checked out some of their other stuff, I uh, recently read Ninja Kaden. Uh, fantastic, fantastic story uh, from uh, Eric Palicki writing that one. I can't remember the art team on it, but just fantastic worlds that they're building here. Um, and I'd recommend this one. Uh, as, as highly as I could on on picking it up because it's a new world to dive into and it's going to be worth the, the dive into the world. Uh, from what Jonathan said, it's only going to get crazier from here. And especially since once he started working with Luigi more and was able to um, create his writing to work with Luigi uh, in, in some regards and knew what Luigi could do. Uh, so that's really cool that it's just going to get better and better each issue. Uh, so please check this one out uh, and check out the interview. I will try to link both interviews at the end of this video for you guys to go check those out. Thank you guys for watching. That is a longer video, but we had two trade paperbacks and 10 single issues to talk about today. Uh, so it's a good new comic book day coming up. Uh, if you haven't already go hit that subscribe button and drop a comment down below let me know what you are picking up this week for new comic book day and as always collect what you love see you next time